Hey everyone, today's video is about when you get stabbed for a ham. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Let's get going. It was just another day at UA High School, and Bakugou was as hot-headed as ever. He was a top student in the hero course, and had a repetition for being arrogant and short-tempered. But to you, he was the love of your life. You and Bakugou had been dating for a while now and your relationship had its ups and downs. He was a difficult person to deal with, but you loved him nonetheless. You knew that deep down, he cared about you and would do anything to protect you. One day, Bakugo and his classmates were out on a mission to apprehend a group of villains. You had been worried sick about him, but you knew he was strong and capable. However, your worst fears were realized when you received a call from you at the school's infirmary. Moyan, it's me, recovery girl. Bakugo has been injured, and he's in a critical condition. We need you to come to the infirmary right now. You rushed to the infirmary, your heart pounding in your chest. When you arrived, you saw Bakugo lying on a hospital bed, surrounded by medical equipment. His face was pale, and he looked like he was in a lot of pain. What happened? You asked recovery girl. He was stabbed by a villain's quirk. She explained. He's lost a lot of blood, and we need to operate right away. He felt a knot in your stomach as you watched the doctors and nurses prepare for surgery. You couldn't bear the thought of losing Bakugo. Not after everything you had been through together. As the surgery began, he paced nervously outside the operating room. Minutes turned to hours, and you felt like you were going to lose your mind. When finally, the doors opened, and a doctor emerged. Is he okay? You asked, barely able to speak. He's stable for now, but he's not out of the woods yet. The doctor said. We'll keep you updated on this condition. He stayed by Bakugo's side for days watching over him as he recovered. He was still unconscious, but he talked to him as if he could hear you. He told him how much you loved him and how much he meant to you. Finally, Bakugo began to stir. He opened his eyes and looked around, confused. Moyon, he said, his voice weak. I'm here, Katsuki, you said, taking his hand. You're going to be okay. Bakugo's recovery was slow, but he was determined to get back on his training. He supported him every step of the way, encouraging him when he felt like giving up. One day, as Bakugo was training, he noticed the villain lurking in the shadows. He knew that he was up to no good, and that Bakugo was in danger. He didn't want him to be like that again. And so... Katsuki, look out! He was shouted, pushing him out of the way, just as the villain attacked. He felt a sharp pain in your chest as the villain's knife sliced into your flesh. He fell to the ground, gasping for air. Moyan, Bakugo shouted, rushing to your side. Why did you do that? I couldn't let anything happen to you again. I couldn't. Sorry. You said... Your voice barely above whisper. The villains fled as Bakugo held you in his arms, tears streaming down his face. Don't leave me, Oyan. He pleaded. Please don't leave me. I love you, Katsuki. You said, your vision fading. I love you too, Oyan. Bakugo said, his voice shaking with emotion. Please just don't leave. The paramedics arrived, and they rushed you in the infirmary. Bakugo followed closely, behind, his heart breaking at the sight of you lying on a hospital bed, pale and still. He sat by your side, holding your hand and praying that you would pull through. The doctors worked tirelessly to save your life, but it was touch and go for a while. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, he began to stir. Bakugo's heart leapt with joy when he saw your eyes open. Moyan, he exclaimed, his voice shocked with emotion. 
You're awake. I'm sorry, Katsuki. I didn't mean to scare you like that. Don't be sorry. I'm just so glad you're okay. Bakugo said, tears streaming down his face. You stayed in the infirmary for several more days, but eventually you were released. Bakugo insisted on taking care of you, even though he was still recovering from his own injuries. As you lay in bed, Bakugo stood by your side, holding your hand and talking to you. He told you about his stories from the past. Everything that happened to him when you were unconscious and so on. He told you about how much he loved you and how he couldn't imagine his life without you. I don't know what I would do without you, Ion. You mean everything to me. I love you, Katsuki. I would do anything for you. I know. And I would do anything for you too. As you lay there in Bakugo's arms, you know that no matter what the future held, you would always be there for each other. Your love was strong enough to survive anything, even a brush with death. In the days following your release from the infirmary, you found yourself struggling with nightmares and flashbacks of the moment you were stabbed. Bakugo noticed how you would wake up in a cold sweat, gasping for air, and he knew that he needed to do something to help you. He held you tightly, whispering words of comfort and reassurance in your ear. He promised to always be there for you, and to never leave your side. Slowly but surely, the nightmares and flashbacks began to fade away, replaced by a deep sense of gratitude and love for the man who had saved your life and stayed by your side. As you looked at Bakugo, you felt a wave of emotions wash over you. You knew that you would never forget the pain and fear of that fateful day, but you also knew that you had a love that was stronger than any hardships. I love you, Katsuki. You whispered, snuggling closer to him, sniffling his scent. It comforted you. Whatever you were going through, it always managed to do so. I love you too, Lion. And I'll always be here for you. Make sure you know that. Bakugo said, his voice filled with warmth and affection. I do. I always will. And make sure to do so. Either way, if I ever forget, it'll feel like, um, I'm not doing enough to be in this relationship. But you are. You don't have to worry about that. Just being alive is enough for me. Got it? Got it. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you liked this video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Goodbye.